in the title of this live and we are now rolling okay welcome to episode three of stall talk where we are going to talk about mental health for horses and everything that's going on in the stall high platform the online training app as well as the mentorship program my name is kendra dixon i live in aubrey texas I've been born and raised in the barn, basically. I've been riding horses since before I could walk and before I could talk. And in 2020, it was really impressed upon me that we as a horse community needed our own place on the World Wide Web, that we needed a place to call our own, a platform that is not owned by an outsider who may or may not approve of our lifestyle, wearing uh, boots and jeans and belt buckles and cowboy hats and riding horses, you know, as a way of life. Um, we don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world today. And so I just felt it was very important to create an app exclusively for horse people. Now, since 2020, we've started producing online clinics and clinics that offer training and support uh, for riders that have questions with their horses. We've produced clinics like Ride With Confidence, um, better posture, better horse. Don't sell your horse, which really is not just for a seller, but there's also a great, uh, there's so many buying tips in there as well. So as we get started today, I'm just going to check in with Lori, make sure that I am the highlighted speaker, because every time I go live on these things, I never see who's like main on the screen. And we're going to say a great big thank you. There it is. Thanks, Lori. So we're going to say a great big thank you to Jake Whitman Farrier Services. Jake Whitman is in Weatherford, Texas. He is a master farrier. He personally helped, win, helped me win a lot of rodeos back when my Red Roan gilding was really fire and hot. I was having so many soundness issues with him, and he had been passed to multiple farriers, had had a couple of different vets trying to keep him sound, and uh you know, the horse just wanted to win. He had such a heart to win, but his feet just wouldn't hold him. His feet just wouldn't hold up for him. So when I actually ended up at Riata uh, Equine Hospital in Weatherford, they have a podiatry center. I met Dr. Justin High and I met Jake Whitman that day. And I tell you what, Dover's career, that was a pivotal moment in my horse's career because Jake and Dr. High together make a dynamic team and they help they help get a lot of horses to their fullest potential. They help keep performance horses sound and happy and physically fit wanting to do their job. So if you're having problems with your horse's feet, maybe you feel like you live in the middle of nowhere and you don't have access to um, a great selection of farriers, reach out to us. We're happy to connect you with Jake Whitman because if you don't specifically live in North Texas where Jake can personally put hands on your horse and, and help you find the shoeing solution, well, then you can consult with him. We're happy to connect you so that you can send in x-rays or if you need help knowing what x-rays to take so that you can have a strategic plan with your own farrier, Jake's awesome. Wonderful to deal with. So we're we're very happy to have his support at Stall High. And I'm really excited about episode three of Stall Talk. We're going to go through some videos that have been turned in the past week that we call Review My Ride Video Analysis Program. This is where you can send in a video of your horse and get personal feedback as to where things are starting to fall apart. What is breaking down? If you've tried everything you know to do and it's still not working, we are here for you. Stall High is going to make it very easy for you to get help today. And you can actually talk to a team of expert coaches five nights a week, because in addition to all of the training platform and the library, which is not Netflix, but it's kind of like Netflix for horse people. You can watch uh, over 200 hours of clinics on demand. You can rewatch them as many times as you want to. Um, you also have an opportunity to become an actual interactive member at Stall High. And that's where you can join a Zoom kind of like this one. You'll have the private Zoom link. You can come in five nights a week, every week, and talk to a team of coaches for personal help personal answers and support throughout the journey because if you've been in the horse business for more than five minutes you've realized that this is a process quick fixes don't last band-aids like 
They might give you a little bit of relief, but they're not going to solve your horse's problem. So we are all about solving the horse's problem by really diving to the root of the issue. And more times than not, there is a biomechanical reason why your horse mentally and or physically cannot respond to your cue. So if you are really frustrated with your horse right now, you don't understand why everything you've tried is not working and why your horse is resisting you. Maybe your horse is refusing at this point. Um, before that escalates any further, we want to help you nip it in the bud so that you know the reason it's happening. We help you find the solution so that you can solve the problem. And then most importantly, we want to help you sustain the success. We want to walk with you as long as you care to be with us um, so that you have daily support learning anything, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, how to, how to ride your horse successfully in your event or playing hockey or maybe a computer programming, like there's constant education. There's, there's a constant process of continued education and learning and expanding what you know. And I certainly am getting to experience that as part of stall high I am floored at how much I learn from the other coaches every week. So it's definitely helping me level up my own skill and knowledge comprehension with my horses. So I'm very excited about what my future holds with my own horses. I think that's enough said about today and uh, what we're doing at Stall High. Let's go ahead and get started with Review My Ride. I'm going to share my screen. Lori, if you'll let me know when Matt gets here, please. Okay, Emily. So you've been yes, you've been part of Stall High. When did you join? February, maybe. I started at the very day one. January is when we started our mentor yes, program. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We just kicked this off after the national finals. We saw you out in Vegas, and uh, just love getting to actually meet you in person because you started coming to the to the clinics before we started the mentorship program, right? Yes, ma'am. That's what got my attention. From the first clinic I attended online, I won a buckle and a saddle blanket with just the little changes that you helped me make with this course. So good. It's so much fun now because I used to just stand out in that arena and just, just <laughs> sweat myself to death. And the people that would drive here, you know, drive across the country, which is super expensive. Um, and whether it was raining, sleet, snow, 106 degrees, like we just had to try to cram 40 years of experience into four hours. And that is not humanly possible. That just doesn't make sense. You can't possibly share everything you want to in a short amount of time. So I'm excited. The results that everybody's getting through this online program. Let's talk about this ride. Did you tell me this was Saturday or Sunday? This was Sunday. And I haven't ridden that course in about three weeks. How does he feel to you in this run? I felt like I was kind of all over the place. And he, it feels like we have a really big lag time. Like if I really get after him, he's like, oh, okay. I'll get going, but he's really slow to respond. Okay. And he's still young, right? He's a baby. No, this is an old guy. He's the old man. Okay. 20. He is. This is the one that's had EPM. This is Ranger. Okay. So what's the goal? What did, what is your next goal that you want to accomplish with Ranger? faster you want to go faster okay but I know we need to get kind of our technical skills down first before we kind of improve and go faster okay so right I have the confidence now. with him it's just the technical issues so right here do you see where he's starting to twist his head and he's opening the mouth yes yes Oh, that hurts a little too much. It's a little too much pressure for me, mom. So yes. if you can read that now, how will you adjust your hands next time?
I would lighten it up. Okay. And use would I use more leg instead of hand? Yes. But to do that, I think the fastest thing you can do to get results, do you see where your hand is right now? It's way, it's too far back. It, my elbow's back. It's too far back. It's also too low. So look it's at- too low. Your yes, hand. it's down instead of out. Yes. So your hand right now, you can just look at the rain right now because it is taut. Okay, so there's there's tension yes. on that hand. It is a straight line. So that tells us that the amount of force being applied to his mouth and the bars of his mouth is too much. We know it's a lot because there's a lot of leverage there, which yes, that I believe is why one other thing happened that could have triggered him like, oh, and then this compounded it. So I want to come back to your hand right as you approach. I see like a little bobble with your hand and then you drop it low. Right there. See that little bump? Yes. Yeah. Right there. It went like, oh, oh. Okay, so we want to smooth that out as much as possible. I believe we're going to do that by hitting the gas. So I actually want yes. to speed up going in there and take your uh -huh. reins. I saw between the first and the second, a big loop between your hands. So that tells me you have excess. And we don't want excess because... You're going to, it's going to allow you to get in the wrong spot just simply because they're too long. Okay. And you don't have time to gather up, right? Because you're in motion. So that little oops going in and then having your hand too low with that direct amount of pressure, that's what's going to cause him to start to resist right here. And I have a feeling he felt pressure at the last possible step right here. So potentially, I don't know, do you think you hesitated handing it back to him? I might have. I definitely, okay. when you slow it down, I can see that. And I, I love it where we can slow it down and see that because I know you want to move your hand out instead of down because it's going to put more pressure on the bars of his mouth. So yes. Absolutely. Shortening my reins more. Yes. How do my stirrup blanks look? So I was well? explaining that too. When I was writing, uh, when I was watching this, you know, I, you think you're it up. Up, I think you're getting there. I still see you writing um, cautiously. So I think you still have tension in your thigh that I want you to just let go. It's, it's okay. almost whole, you're retaining some worry right there. And that may be what he's feeling. Okay, that signals him to kind of slow down because he doesn't want to push through the pressure. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. And another thing I can see when um, you see the turbulence happen right before you start that. Yes. Sometimes yes. that happens when our muscles are just too tense. That's all it is. Okay. So imagine you're landing on a hard saddle. Well, if your muscles are yes. tight, they're just going to bounce. And when you learn to just let go, you can go with the horse. You can go with the movement. So let's talk to Ben this week on Thursday about, okay. um, you know, how to identify when you're holding tension and some like very practical steps. I like how Ben makes it practical for us. Like the other day when he said, Start to pay attention when you get nervous. Is it when you're loading the horses? Just change one thing in your routine. Well, that's easy. We can all do that. So let's talk to him about how to start to identify where you're holding tension so we can find the root of it and how to help you let go and trust to speed up. And I think Ranger is going to respond without you having to kick him more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw one other little bobble right here. When you're coming out of there, it seems like you kind of have to lean into the barrel. Right there, yeah. it kind of unseated you. So just taking that rein up, tracing around the turn. Um, Do you see the video that I posted in the app with the exact measurement of the reins? I didn't find that, so I need to go back and look because I was questioning that. I did shorten my reins up quite a bit, but I was wondering 
how short they should be. Okay. So I definitely need that. I'll get that this week. So let me make a note. Thank you. Rain length. Because that was the one thing I definitely did before all this that day is shorten them okay. quite a bit. And I brought up my stirrups uh, one extra hole. Okay. Do you feel more secure overall? I do. And that's where I'm like, I want to go faster, but I definitely want to get those, as you said, the little bubbles and smooth it out first. And then, of course, the straightaways, I'm ready to go faster. On this horse, I feel that confidence where I'm ready to do anything. So, And then my younger horses is where I'm trying to go real slow, get them technical. And this guy, I want to go have fun on and just go as fast as I can. I love it. I, I love that plan. So, all right. So we're going to take your reins up. We're going to talk to Vin about tension and like literal very clear steps on how to start letting go so that your horse isn't afraid to push through he doesn't feel pressure he actually feels permission to go forward and speed up um so Lori, who else is with us who's on the iphone today Is that Lori? Maybe. Hey, Lori. Lori, is that you on the iPhone? We've got a smaller group on Zoom today, and I see Matt's not here yet. So, Lori, if that's you, drop us a comment. Okay, so I'm going to go over this review really quick. This came in from a rider named Cami, and this is actually an older mare. She ran on the track when she was younger. I typically don't go with the race bred horses like, you know, that's just not my style. I like the, the cow ponies and the rate and those that are kind of sticky and grippy, but I love this mare. Such a sweet, sweet mare. Um, you can see that she just really has a heart to go in and work and do her job. And uh, I mean, they just coast guys there's no real effort here there's no struggle there's not a lot of push and she still shuts the clock off so she's still uh gonna clock like a 15 6 i believe let's see what this last time is right here 15 9 i mean how many of us would love to run a 15 9 right i mean this is a great run so how can we come in and help this team start to whittle that down, okay? Especially with an older mare that's probably been running barrels for a long time and may or may not be a little bit set in her ways. So these are just a few things that I sent to Cammie earlier in the week, okay? So right here, I don't believe that mare needs such a, such a hard check. So at Stall High and in our online program, we actually provide the visual steps so if you are a visual learner and you're having problems with your horse, it does not have to be a barrel horse. We're going to explain the biomechanics of what's happening underneath you. We're going to explain, you know, physically how your horse's body anatomy, how your horse's anatomy moves and, and should move in motion so that you can help facilitate the best ride possible with the least amount of resistance. So first thing I would do would be soften up the check. That's very hard to do if you don't trust a horse is going to turn. So typically there's a, there's a, there's a bottleneck or there's a kink in the plan somewhere, somewhere in the plan, something is breaking down that makes this rider feel like she has to check to control this horse. So what I would like to do to continue the process is really do a thorough tack check, make sure that her equipment is working for her instead of against her. Okay, and that would alleviate you see the little head toss right there. What we want to do, again, softer check right here, I believe would have helped this mare keep her nose and be even more smooth through this turn. Um, again, great job. If we want to go back, like if we, we're just super picky and she wants to 
you know, start whittling down a tenth of a second here and a tenth of a second there and two tenths of a second at the third barrel, well, all of a sudden they're four tenths of a second faster. Just spending no money, just simple adjustments, okay? Not buying a new horse, not buying a new saddle, just knowing how to adjust what you've already got and knowing how to position your horse in the best place possible so that they can do their job, so that they're set up for success instead of set up for hardship. So the, the next step would be just explaining those visuals, you know, where to aim, how to help this gray mare set up at a better angle so that um, they don't have that little bobble and they aren't out as wide coming into that turn. But overall, Cami, fantastic run. And I do love your mare. So this is a young rider. She's new to the mentorship program at Stall High. So we're just getting to know her. She's on a seven-year-old hot rod. <laughs> this mare can run. Oh, this mare is cool to watch. So I love the motor. I can see that this horse really wants to work. You've got a very capable rider who clearly wants to do everything right by her horse. Okay, so she reached out initially with a review my ride video analysis. And so I sent my, sent my review back, sent some tips back. I'm really excited to have this rider. So right there, there's a perfect example. We talked about this last week, Emily. Um, when, you're, when you're starting out or when you're riding a horse that's like your, your lazy boy, you know, your, your comfort zone, you know, you're just kind of starting out. Maybe you're in the 5D or the 4D. Well, those horses are a lot easier to ride. But as you, and you might have, you might make some mistakes and you might be aware of them and they might irritate you and they might irritate the horse, kind of like a little rock in your shoe. Like you're aware of it. You can still walk, but not very comfortably. Okay. When you step up in horsepower. So when you step onto a horse that maybe is not as seasoned, mentally, um, a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot quicker on their feet. Well, that same mistake you made on the 5D horse that felt like a pebble in your shoe will now feel like a broken heel missing off, missing off of your boot or off of your high heel stiletto. Imagine walking like that. It feels extreme. It feels wobbly. I mean, it makes you like, it rattles you like, how am I going to take the next step? This is not natural. This doesn't feel right. Like, I know something is wrong. I just don't know how to fix it. So again, this minor uh, error, right? in timing, which is not this rider's fault. It's not this horse's fault, but I do blame her traditional training. So whatever training, because it's the same way I was taught, that's what's failing them right now. It's the lack of knowledge. That's it. Has nothing to do with this horse. Has nothing to do with this rider. It was simply a lack of knowledge, which we're going to help uh, help them become more cohesive as a team so that this turn becomes more push button automatic. It flows light and smooth and crisp rather than feeling so extreme. And I don't know where she's clocking with this horse. I mean, had this barrel alone been what the first barrel was, I believe they could have clearly or easily uh, won this race. I don't know what the competition was. And we had a little hesitation right there. So that's what we're going to start working on uh, with this horse and rider team. I'm really excited to have them in the mentorship program. Here's another lady. I love her story. So here's a mom. She's a busy mom. She's raising a family. She has this amazing young filly um, that was started as a cutter. Uh, this horse is five years old. Again, she wants to do everything right because she recognizes she has a wonderful prospect. She's got a nice horse and she wants to season and finish this horse without any setbacks. Okay. So let's go back right here. So what we talked about this week in her review, my ride is I can see right now, because this is a um, more stereotypical cow pony type. Okay. So this mare naturally is going to go to the ground. And when I say that, I mean, she's going to stop and she's going to drop her hocks in the ground. When you have that, you want to retain that. So being able to recognize a horse's natural ability, their strong points, you want to capitalize on them. You don't want to take them away. 
And so I feel like the traditional route of training, trying to keep this horse round and shaped and setting over to a big style pocket completely negates her natural born ability and her natural instinct to rate and cow a barrel. So we're going to modify her plan. We're obviously going to do some tack adjustments and then spell it out with the online program. So this rider's opting in for the DIY program, which is $37 a month. You can hardly buy a bag of feed for $37 these days, guys. Um, or you can't get your nails done for $37 anymore. And Entry fees typically cost more than 37. So I'm so proud of this rider for being willing to invest in herself and in her knowledge. Um, we've made it super easy. It's all within the Stall High app. You have access to the training options and the mentorship program so that she can get in there and watch all the replays when it's convenient for her and then start applying for this horse so that she doesn't get sucked down like I did. I just got sucked down in what everybody else was doing and what I thought was just um, pressed upon me and spoon fed that you have to drill. You have to have this certain barrel racing saddle. You have to have this certain barrel racing feed. You have to have this certain approach and you got to lift that shoulder and you got to check, check, lift. And oh my gosh, it was a vicious cycle and I ruined so many horses and I wasted so much time. So uh, that was a, a very hard, very expensive lesson learned that I want to save other people from having to repeat. So I'm excited to have this new rider in our program. All right. On the iPhone, Lori, is that Carrie? Carrie, did you join us today? And your name doesn't show up? I'm here. Hey. Hi. Good. How are you? Doing? Good. So I think your videos are next. I'm glad you made it today. Yep. All right. He's six. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And this was Saturday a week ago? So, yeah, that was a week ago. Okay. And so what do you remember from Review My Ride? So going into the second, he he stops. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that was like a confidence for him so mainly for my focus for him is just building up his confidence and getting our balance back to where we were in the beginning okay so I believe when you sent this video in and I did the video analysis for you mm -hmm. so something in my gut told me that He's the kind of horse that only wants to please you. And if he feels like you're not happy with him, he just kind of shuts down and he turns off the motor, which is what my horse, Ola, does. She has such quick reflexes to rate. That's her natural instinct. She's not a flight kind of horse. She's a rate horse. Um, and we actually talked through his history and come to find out he had been schooled a lot so he had been in a traditional program correct where he had been drilled and drilled and drilled yes yeah she has she has a big stable and you know that's all she focuses on she only lets loose of a horse when um you know when it's their time to shine so okay. that's when she uh gives them a break and until until she, until she sees progress in her horses, that's when she settles down with her drilling. Mm -hmm. And not, not every horse responds to that. And I mm -hmm. feel like what I'm seeing in this video is that we have a sensitive, um, a horse with some sensitive emotions. Yes. He's trying very much to please you. But if he gets scared, if he has a question mark, he just shuts down. And the mm -hmm. problem with that, if we, if that is allowed to become reinforced and if he resents, if he's, if he's telling you right now that he can't handle the pressure and he's, mm -hmm. he's starting to, to lose confidence in himself. Okay. We don't want that to continue. We must intervene immediately because if he becomes discouraged and feels like you are even more disappointed in him mentally, 
that's going to take a toll on him and his physical behavior is going to become worse, which mm-hmm. I think is what happened. Is that right? So you ran yeah. him again Saturday. So, yes, I ran him again Saturday. And that is so true because after having that, bar- after us knocking that barrel, him and I kind of have, it's funny because him and I kind of have the same personality. So mm-hmm. going into that second run that we did, we both kind of freezed up and just, it was, I was holding him back. He was trying to shoulder. It just, I mean, we kept all the barrels up, but <laughs> it wasn't the prettiest. Lori, was I sharing that the whole time? Could y'all see that? Those videos? Yes, yes we did. Yes. Okay. See your phone screen. Let me stop my share real quick. There we go. Stop sharing. Okay. We're back. Okay. So Carrie, we, um, I think I shared with you after I saw your video on Friday night, our coach on Friday, uh, is Ronnie Clampett and he's actually here today on this live. We actually got into this conversation about how to recognize those subtle cues uh, in a horse that can, they can be so easy to overlook if you haven't felt them a thousand times, which we don't want you to have to feel them a thousand times because that's going to be expensive and that's going to set you back a few decades. So if we can help you start to identify, uh uh-oh, that is a, that's actually a major warning sign on the dashboard of your horse. Like we need to change that his uh, thought pattern right now before things unravel and irreparable damage is done. And it's probably not physical It's mental. And that's where we feel like we can really bridge the gap for the industry because physically, you know, horse care today is so much better than it used to be. Our industry is knocking it out of the park. We have great vet care. We have great supplements. We have great education. We have all of these therapies that we didn't have, you know, just a few decades ago. So we're able to physically provide better care than we've ever offered to our horses all right especially performance horses but by and large the industry is missing the value of their mental health and sometimes it is so much harder to recover from mental damage okay I don't know if you've ever felt that or not but Ronnie made a great point on Friday if you have ever experienced anything negative a negative season in your life either physical pain or emotional trauma you don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. You don't want to live that again. You don't want to be reminded of that again. So right now, something is happening biomechanically. There's something in your body, in the way your tack is adjusted. Um, There's something in the setting right now that is triggering him to go back in time to where he had a bad taste in his mouth. And it it was probably, probably started with physical pain somewhere. And now Mm -hmm. it has become a mental scar okay and whatever we think and that whatever we repeat uh both physically uh for horses and for people well that just kind of becomes our our mode of operation that becomes a routine and that becomes a habit so how do you feel now about joining our program after what happened saturday i tried to say quick results but again quick answers seldom you you nailed right on the spot with him like when you described him I'm like wow that was perfect so like it it was almost like you you owned him instead of me so um he and I think it has a little bit to do with the laminitis issues Mm -hmm. and him getting tossed into um a training program where he where he could be just a horse and he didn't know what to do. And I think that has a lot to do with that. Um, but now I've started to see his more, per, more of his personality um, this year than I, I have ever had since I've owned him for about three years. Okay. So I think now is really the time to where I can focus on him and his training a little better. Good. Now Now that he's gotten comfortable. Or do you have other horses that you're responsible for riding? 
he's he's just my only one so that has a little bit to do with it too i believe he goes from a group of horses to none at all so (laughs) well and so i'm going to ask you a few more questions and matt reeves is not here today but man we just love listening to matt on mondays and he said something last night in class and he said he started asking a lot of questions. You know, why did you do it this way? Why did you choose to do it that way? Help me understand why you made a decision to treat this horse in this manner. And so the reason he asked questions is because he wants our students to see for themselves. Rather than us spoon feeding you the answers, we want to help you see the answers for yourself so that you know how to maintain the success you're not always dependent on someone else to fix a problem for you so I want to ask you some questions how many times a week do you ride them um so I ride him about six days a week okay I give him a day off how many of those days do you practice barrels um I try to stay away from barrels just because I've had experience with hot horses. Mm -hmm. So doing it at home, um, I try not to burn them out too much. Um, I don't very many drills too. So all I'm doing is just rocking or sorry, I can't speak walking the pattern or trotting the pattern. Okay. Um, So I would like to build up more uh, drills in the future so we can do barrels at home to where I won't be burning him out. Okay. I actually think we need to like release him from ever doing another drill again in his life. Cause clearly he got an overdose of that and it left a bad taste in his mouth. So our ways are different at stall high. We're going to help you come up with a new routine every week so that he mentally becomes more healthy uh, so that we help repair whatever bad memory he has that's being triggered so that typically means we're going to make some changes um in in your weekly routine and you as a rider but that's what we all want right we all want to go further and do more with our horses than where we're at right now well then we can all acknowledge in order to make that happen we've got to change something So we're going to help you make very minor adjustments in how you think about your horse, how you ride. And it could be something as simple like Emily today. Let's just locate where she's holding tension in her body and then get our mental coach to help her have a plan for releasing that. So her horse doesn't feel that pressure physically, but instead he feels freedom and permission to run. Interesting that we're talking about two similar horses today on this on stall talk because you both have horses that are yeah safety enough they're safety enough they're like they're they're not going to run through the pressure instead they're going to hit that rate button or they're going to turn the motor off until you until they're really clear on what to do next so Mm -hmm. we would just love to have you as part of what we're doing and help you continue through this journey and get you back on the road with him because I do believe he has the heart to please you. I do believe he's trying, but something's blocking him mentally. He definitely has potential and he's very young. Um, but and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a switch of pattern too, because he was my main pull horse. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. You know, he goes from doing pools all of his life too, to where I, I just do barrels mainly with him now. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I definitely, I can't wait to grow and learn with him, especially with you guys helping me out. So good. Well, I'm going to send you information after we finish this live so that we can get you plugged into the mentorship program. And um, it is a process. So the more we get to know you, the more we get to know this horse personally, the team can help customize your plan so that you're, we're not just stabbing in the dark and you're not just, you know, trying to recycle somebody else's drill program that worked for them. But we uniquely want to Mm -hmm. understand this horse and understand you so that we can help you uh, not just get the results, but keep them. 
Okay. So I'm glad you made it today. Yeah. This was fun. All right. So Lori, will you talk a little bit about our new option for, for membership, please, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we, we have five coaches, including Kendra here and Ronnie that's on with us. Uh, we go live at 6 p.m. daily, uh, Central Standard Time. And each person has their own area of expertise and we all work together to do exactly what Kendra's just been talking about. Um, we also are uh, launching a new level where if you are focused on, if you have one specific problem or you need, you have one specific um, goal or uh, solution that you're searching for, you can pick your pro. So you don't have, if you don't need all five, you know, specific issue that you're trying to work through, you can mm -hmm. sign up for monthly membership to join the, the expert of your choice on their night every week. So yes. if you are interested in that, you can reach out to us, um, info at stall high, or you're welcome to text us. It's 940-291-9090. Thank you, Lori. Yes, so we're excited. And the the pick your pro, really what makes the most sense to me are people um, like our new member, um, the steer wrestler up in Nebraska with his sons who want to make the finals this year. Well, guys, if you want to know how to rodeo and you want to rodeo smart, now that I listen to Matt Reeves every Monday because he's our Monday coach and we call him Rodeo Google Reeves because in, he is an eight-time NFR qualifier he is a rodeo veteran and he is so invested in the sport itself and knowing like the business model, <laughs> developing a smart strategy for rodeoing within a budget to get you where you want to go. I realize now that I listen to Matt every Monday, I rodeo dumb. I had how many chances to make it to the finals? I had multiple horses that were capable and did win at the pro level but I wasn't able to sustain all year throughout the season I learned like it's one thing to get in the top 15 it's a whole other ball game to stay in the top 15 had Matt coached me had we had stall high back then had I been able to listen to him every week and have him teach me how to enter rodeos as a business model not just blind faith like, oh, we're just going to enter what we think we can and just pray our horse, you know, stay sound. That was dumb. <laughs> I can see that now. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how many years, how many years did I run up and down the road, coast to coast? How many, how many trucks did I wear out? You know, how many, how many vet bills did we have trying to keep Dover sound? Had I just understood the business of pro rodeo, if I just known how to enter better and Matt has a plan, guys, if you want to capitalize on it right now, if you have a horse that's firing and ready to go right now and you want your shot, there is a way. So there is a way you can actually qualify for the national finals the first six weeks of the season. Matt can help you walk through that process. He can customize your rodeo journey. What is your business model? so that you have the best shot to make the finals in six weeks, okay? The first six weeks of the season, so you don't have to haul your butt off all year and drag your horse all around the United States for 11 months. So if that interests you, reach out to us, info at stallhigh.com. We want to get you plugged in so that you can join Matt's class on Monday nights and he can help explain how that works. It's a very short, very narrow window of opportunity. My plan is to get myself and my horse ready so that I can capitalize on pulling that trigger this time next year. Because financially that makes sense for me. And my time is primarily here at Stall High now. I spend so much time in the office instead of the saddle. I don't ride 12 horses a day like I used to. Um, do, I, do I want to be rodeoing? Yes, but I don't wanna waste money. I don't have time to waste and money to burn. So I'm listening to Matt Reeves every Monday and I'm going to get myself ready. I'm making a commitment to listen all year long, get myself ready all year long so that I can come out swinging this time next year and capitalize on that six week window. 
So if that interests you, reach out to us, info at Stall High. We'll get you connected with Matt Reeves. Thank you again to Jake Whitman, Farrier Services. Jake is a master farrier. If you're having problems with your horse's feet, okay, and you don't know how to fix it, um, you can book a consult call so that you don't have to haul all the way to North Texas. Jake will look at your horse's x-rays. He'll listen to your story. He will help you customize a plan to get your horse sound and work with your farrier and your vet team so that they feel supported as well. Sometimes, um, you know, you might live in a part of the country where you don't have a, a broad selection of farriers and vets that specialize in podiatry. That's okay. As long as they are receptive to having a phone call, Jake is wonderful. He's wonderful at sharing his expertise with other farrier teams and vet teams and really come up with a personalized plan for your horse. And now that we have the technology we have today, we can very easily connect you with Jake Whitman. Uh, so you can set up a Zoom call, you can send in x-rays and videos of your horse so that you can help get the best results possible. So thank you, Jake Whitman, for sponsoring episode three of Stall Talk. Emily, thank you for being here. Carrie, Ronnie, thank you so much. Also, we're at 1254. Lori, thanks for being here. And I will see you guys next Tuesday for Stall Talk. If you have questions, message us. Thank you for liking and following every channel, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, um, or Instagram. Thank you for taking time to like this page and comment because it definitely helps the algorithms and it's going to help other people know how we can help them with their horse uh, for pennies on the dollar from the convenience of your phone. Y'all have a great afternoon. I'll see you next Tuesday.